and welcome to another video. So this video is going to be very quick because I want to solve the system of equations uh, that you have here. We just want to know what x is and know what y is. Well, that looks very easy because instead of me writing y in the second equation, I can just replace it with e to the 4x and write it here. So I'm going to end up with this equation. e to the 4x is equal to e to the 2x plus 6. Well, I can take everything to one side and have something equal to 0. As you begin to see, you can see that this is the square of this because e to the 4x is e to the 2x squared. Remember the laws of exponents. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. And then this is going to be um, e to the 4x minus e to the 2x minus 6 equals 0. So now, if you remember, e to the 2x squared must be e to the 4x. Just multiply this by this, that law of exponent. So that's what we're going to be applying. And then we can say this looks like a quadratic equation in which if we say um, we can rewrite this as e to the 2x squared minus e to the 2x minus 6 equals 0. And we say let e to the 2x be equal to, let's take k. So we can rewrite this expression as k squared minus k minus 6 equals 0. And we can solve this quadratic equation. Now let's solve that. So we've got k squared minus k minus 6 equals 0. If we factor these, what two numbers will give you negative 6 when you multiply them? But when you add them, you're going to get negative 1. Well, it's going to be negative 3 and positive 2. So we have k squared minus um, 3k plus 2k minus 6 equals 0. When you factor, you're going to end up with k into k minus 3 plus 2 into k minus 3 equals 0. So you have k minus 3 and k plus 2 equals 0. So k equals 3 or k equals negative 2. These are the two possible answers. And we can take these two numbers and plug them in here e to the 2x equals k. Let's see how that's going to work out. So e to the 2x equals 3. That's one option. Or we say e to the 2x equals negative 2. Now, listen, you cannot raise e to a power and suddenly it becomes a negative number. So this is not a valid answer. No, it's impossible for e raised to anything. You can just raise a number, a positive number to something, and that number suddenly becomes negative. It doesn't happen like that. So this is not a valid answer. Also, we're going to reject this one as an option. Okay, let's get y. Remember, y is going to be um, y equals, where is it? e to the 4x, e to the 4x, which we said is the same thing as e to the 2x squared. And we know e to the 2x from here is 3, so we can say y is 3 squared, which means y is 9. Ah, so we got our y. So what exactly is x? Well, we can actually solve for x. Mm, but why don't we just use y? No, let's use x to solve for x. Let's still use this expression. So what we have is, is um, e to the 2x is equal to 3. What do we do? Let's take the logarithm on both sides, okay? Natural log this time, so it makes it easier. So the natural log of e to the 2x equals the natural log of 3. And then we can have 2x natural log of e equals um, natural log of 3. Well, we know the natural log of e is 1, so we end up with 2x equals natural log of 3, and x is natural log of 3 divided by 2. Okay, um, you can leave your answer this way, or you can write it as, we could have done this, okay, but whatever happens, we're still good. x is the natural half of the natural log of 3, or the natural log of the square root of 3. Okay, that's another way we can write this. I'm going to get rid of this. So what we have, we have, you can leave it this way, or you can say it is um, 1 half, natural log of 3, or is the same thing as natural log of 3 raised to the power 1 half, or you can say is the natural log of the square root of 3, that's x. So whatever answer you choose is correct. This is your x and y equals 9. Uh, put a box around it. So that's your x and that's your y. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.